Hello and welcome to this 30 minute presentation on trigger based marketing. Um, in the next half hour uh, I'll give you an introduction into the basics of trigger based marketing and I will show you some examples that illustrate what it is and what uh, is possible with this marketing discipline. My name is Ed Sonder and I am the co-author of the original book about event-driven marketing which I co-wrote with Egbert Jan van Bel and Ruud Verduin in 2004 which won the uh, Dutch Marketing Literature Prize back in the days. Um, a few years ago in 2010 we published the international version of this book called Follow That Customer, the event-driven marketing handbook. Um, now this presentation is about trigger-based marketing and it's basically an evolved version of event-driven marketing, what we wrote about in these two books. So it's, uh, it, it's got a bigger scope and therefore can also be used by, uh, by more companies, for, uh, even for those where event-driven marketing might be a bit too complicated or where there's a lack of data. Um, in the next half hour I'll explain to you what trigger-based marketing is. And I'll uh, lead you through three types of triggers, like uh, life phase triggers, product phase triggers, and relationship phase triggers. And uh, after that, we'll have a quick look where you can get some of the data uh, you need to run these programs. And we'll have a quick look at the future of trigger-based marketing to close off, to see where are we heading to. Well, trigger-based marketing is all about using the exact right moment um, and finding the right trigger to contact a customer that's a potential buyer for your products or services. There are many different names under which trigger-based marketing is known. I already mentioned event-driven marketing, but there's also trigger marketing, behavioral-based trigger marketing, or real-time marketing. Uh, there might be slight differences in uh, definitions and, and the scope of all of these, but basically most of them uh, follow the, the following definition. It's a marketing technique uh, which is based on responding to a measurable change in customer behavior, a specific customer action or, or an event that takes place with this customer. Uh, what is very important in this definition is we're always talking about specific customers and we are talking about changes. So it could be a change in that behavior. It could, for instance, be that you're normally buying a product from uh, a customer is normally buying a product from your company, and all of a sudden he stops buying. So that could be an indicator that he moved to uh, the competitor, which for you might be um, a trigger to include him in a win-back campaign, which is in that case the response. Um, there's also the possibility that there's a specific new action, a new activity uh, you are um, showing as a customer. For instance, you are now suddenly visiting part of the website where you've never been before. So seemingly all of a sudden you're interested in a new category of products. And finally, there's, uh, there's the uh, original events uh, where uh, we used to talk about with event-driven marketing. And in that case, we're not talking about uh, trade shows or exhibitions, not that kind of event, but an event like something happening in the life of a customer. And uh, think, for instance, about a moving house, uh, you're uh, expecting a baby, uh, you're buying a pet, and I'll show you some, uh, some other ones in this presentation as well. So all of that encompasses uh, trigger-based marketing. Now trigger-based marketing evolved from direct marketing through database marketing. But with direct marketing we would send out huge batches of direct mail to uh, a broad database. Um, sometimes with very little uh, actual uh, selection criteria and we would normally be happy with two to three percent response on these direct marketing campaigns. Um, we got a bit more smart, we got smarter when we started using database marketing. Um, we uh, started looking at the right offer for the right customer in the right channel. So who should I approach through which channel and what should I offer this this person? So we started to make more um, more elaborate more smarter uh, selections into our database, which uh, then um, increase the response to say, for instance, 6%. Now with event-driven, trigger-based marketing, we are moving into a new field where uh, you're also looking at exactly the right moment. Because you might find the right customer 
uh, f with the right offer and contact him through the right channel, whether it's email or telephone or whatever, but it might just not be relevant to him at that specific moment. So what we are now looking for is that right moment. And uh, companies that have been successful with trigger-based marketing have been able to get 15% response rate. There's, there's even, especially in the financial business, financial services sector, there's companies that can get uh, response rates of 25% or more. To give you a bit of a better understanding of the big difference between trigger-based marketing and the original form of traditional marketing is traditional marketing used to think in small, uh, uh, well maybe not small, but short um, promotions in, t in, in, a, in a limited period of time. So uh, you would take one or two months or maybe even a couple of weeks where you would roll out a promotion and then would move into the next promotion. So you, s you might start the year with a New Year's promo, then have a cross-sell campaign and a spring promo. You don't do anything during the holiday break and then you're back with the introduction of your new products. You do an upsell campaign to your current uh, customers and you do a, a special Christmas promotion or a Christmas campaign. And all of these, as you can see, have a very clear beginning and end. And the selections, that's the, uh, the, the, the little puppets you see above these bars, is different every time. Sometimes you have a bigger target audience and sometimes you have a small one. So this is um, how we, we make the, the, the selections, the selection, we use the selection criteria to get to the right target group. But there's always a very clear beginning and an end to all of these campaigns. Whereas with trigger-based marketing, what we're doing is we are running continuous programs because we are no longer determining when we should send you a specific offer. Uh, we are basing this on um, on triggers that we see in your life or in your data. So for instance, uh, we run a welcome program when you actually become a customer. We don't welcome all of the customers in January or in June or December. No, we do that right a few days or maybe directly after you place your first order or if you uh, when you register for a company or for a, as a customer so the same is with moving house um, we contact you shortly before or after you moved house depending on the product we're trying to sell you um, if we are um, offering uh, removal uh, transportation transportation of your furniture for instance it makes no sense to contact you right after you've moved into your new house and your furniture is already there um, so you need to do that at the time that it's in, uh, that it's relevant for the customer and to determine this relevancy we continuously need to look into our database and if we look into the database today we will see that there's different events different triggers occurring for different customers in some cases, you might find that one customer actually has more than one event, um, in which case you would need to determine uh, which of these two are you going to select, because you probably don't want to approach one customer with two different products at the same time. So you might have to build in business rules um, to help you determine what, which of these two events has the highest possible return on investment, so based on the potential margin and the expected response rate, the expected conversion rate. So you build in these business rules, but the, essenti the essential thing, the crucial thing here is that you're continuously every day or every week at least, you are looking in your database for whom is my product relevant now because of his activities, his, his actions or his changing behavior or events. The mechanics behind this work as follows. If an event takes place, we need in our database, we need in our data, an indicator. It could be a visit to a specific web page. It could be um, uh, data we receive through other channels, uh, external channels or internal channels. I'll talk a bit more about that later on. And when we find this indicator occurring, we match it with a score or a scorecard. A score it could be a scorecard that determines if somebody should actually get a specific offer, but it could also uh, mean that an indicator has to occur several times. And I'll give you an example in a moment. When that score is met, the trigger goes off and uh, that the trigger value then uh, ensures that a 
customer is included into a specific campaign and this campaign can con uh, consist of one or more actions or activities and I'll, I'll give you an example to uh, make this a bit more clearer just think of um, somebody that is uh, sh rather short on money at the moment um, so he doesn't have enough uh, balance in his bank account and that you could view as an event that is occurring his uh, temporary shor shortage of, uh, of funding of liquidity so the indicator to show this could for instance be that he is still trying to pay for something in a shop with his bank card or he's trying to extract money from his uh, from an ATM but he is unsuccessful a uh, scorecard could then determine if we should offer this specific customer um, a revolving credit uh, based on his income based on uh, all of the historical data we have available for him and if so what the level of this credit should be so this is determined by uh, a scorecard which is, is, is very common in the financial business um, now if we see this this indicator occurring three times so three failed transactions then this customer is included in the next run of the cross-selling campaign and that campaign could then consist of two actions being a direct mailing um, and a telephone follow-up so this is how you build up uh, a trigger-based uh, marketing campaign out of these uh, different elements the first category of triggers are live phase events and live phase events are common to most of us um, and also uh, lead to some of the most creative usages of trigger-based marketing and it's all about events occurring in the life of a customer um, you could think of birth of a new baby specific birthdays when you uh, become a potential customer for new products like for instance if you're 18 years old here in Holland you can take driver's lessons and in some countries when you're 65 years old you can retire so you have a lot of extra leisure time you have more free time and you might look for new kinds of hobbies starting a study is another event that can take place graduating moving house marrying and then marrying of course leads again to new babies uh, in in most cases so you're back in into the cycle of things the same thing can occur with uh, in the business to business market when you start a company and a company grows or expands and most companies if they grow very big they need to move into a new location um, but there's also termination of uh, one or more activities within a company and maybe acquisitions or mergers or actually selling the company um, so this whole life cycle also uh, occurs within the business to business market now two very simple examples of how, of how you could use some of this data uh, the, the most common used one is a birthday mail and, and a birthday mail is uh, when uh, one of your suppliers one of your uh, the companies where you have bought at previously where you registered your uh, birthday in their database uh, within your customer profile they might send you one of these emails on your date of birth um, and normally they come with a special offer uh, which sort of is a way to uh, make you buy more and, and make you uh, convert again into buying uh, one of their products in the, the case on the left you see that Philips offers um, 10 British pounds if you make a new purchase of at least a hundred pounds so they give you uh, up to 10% discount and on the right you see that on your birthday this uh, this theater is um, uh, this this movie theater is inviting you to come back in and they are giving you a free large soft drink now the interesting thing about the one on the right is and in the follow the customer book we also talk about a birthday club uh, program um, that Arthur Hughes wrote about um, in this case you're never going to the movies alone so you're always taking one of more friends um, so they're giving away one free drink of which the costs are normally relatively low but they are getting at least two more customers uh, in to see their movies you can be also a bit more creative with the date of birth and this is a very interesting example um, I saw a couple of years ago um, misco.nl basically is a consumer to consumer platform that sells 
uh, where, you, where you can sell in the marketplace your stuff to um, uh, other consumers, like basically the original ID behind um, eBay. Um, now what they do is they send you an email the day after your birthday. And you probably cannot read this because it's in, in, uh, in, in Dutch, but what it says is uh, yesterday you had your birthday and uh, your friends and family might have given you a lot of uh, presents, but there's a lot there that you were not really very happy with and you don't see any use for them, so you'd like to get rid of it. Now, you can get rid of all of that junk that your friends gave you by putting it on our website and then you can basically earn some uh, money to buy something that you actually really wanted. So it's uh, it's kind of funny, it's a bit daring, but it's, it's a, a different way of uh, contacting uh, people around their birthday. Um, talking about birthdays, uh, the, the whole baby care uh, market uh, makes a lot uh, of usage of, um, of, of trigger-based marketing and normally based on lead-getting programs where uh, people sign up for free magazines uh, or they uh, go to a store to get like a sample box like the one you see uh, down here, the, uh, the one they are, are handing out and it normally includes all kinds of information and samples from um, products and services related to baby care. Now you normally have to hand in your contact details and this is then sold again to uh, to these companies. So it's a way for companies to get in touch with the people that are expecting or have just had a new baby. One of the um, one of the manufacturers, one of the brands that used this information was um, Nutricia. And Nutricia. Uh, use this information to contact you before birth and right after birth up till one year un until the, the new child was one year old and they would continuously send you information about their their baby milk and their baby food products and they would normally also include a lot of information about how to uh, how to take care of 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 your uh, your baby and how to feed him well and it also included like a nice premium or li a nice incentive. Uh, very popular uh, program at the time done by Direct Mail which actually grew the whole baby food uh, business. Nowadays of course these kinds of things are done by, uh, by, uh, by email and by, uh, by internet and in digital ways instead of actually printed materials. I use that program as, as um, inspiration for one of the programs I developed myself when I was working with the uh, the IAMS company with IAMS Yukonuba products uh, we had a program where we handed out um, puppy packs and kitten kits so packs with samples and brochures and information and coupons to people that were uh, buying their new puppy at a breeder now this was a very successful program but we didn't really have a program to maintain that relationship after they went to the uh, the breeder and we found out that it was extremely important to maintain that relationship otherwise we would have a lot of churn and, and uh, f uh, customers that would in puppy phase be buying our products would switch to uh, grocery products so we developed a, um, a campaign based on the breed size of the dog and the birth date because different breed sizes have different patterns large dogs uh, take longer to become adult and they also live uh, live shorter than, than small breeds for instance so we built this whole program around it where we continuously just like in the nutrition case contacted the uh, the people during the puppy phase of um, of the dog um, second category are triggers that are related to the product uh, not so much to what happens with the customer, but something that is related to the, the product that they bought. It could be the actual moment of buying a new product, it could be the time you replace or so you upgrade a new product, it could be supplies or stocks that are running out, or maybe you have a contract for a service and that service uh, contract is uh, ex expiring, so you want to recontact this customer and see if he wants to renew his, um, his service. A very simple example uh, in this case is, is iCenter. Um, they sell IMAX and by the time your uh, warranty period is running out, um, 
then you can repurchase an extended warranty very simple and a lot of people will use this because they don't want to run the risk of uh, the machine breaking down and they will make a small investment to extend that warranty period um, what's also very common of course is when you buy a product on your online you get asked to review it now in this case on the left I bought two products one of which is a strategic database marketing by Arthur Hughes um, now this is is very common and, and most of us will have seen such a, a review request but Ball.com, which is uh, the biggest bookshop, online bookshop in uh, Holland, they went even farther and they uh, further and they they send me an email uh, in which they uh, gave gave me the op opportunity, the, the possibility to re sell resell some of the books I bought with them. So they say, well, you've you've heard that CD or you you've read that book and maybe you want to get rid of it and you want to resell it. So you can do that in our platform as well. And of course, the interesting thing is that by this way, Ball is not selling this book one time, but might be selling it two times. And maybe even the second customer is reselling it again. So they continuously have the potential to make money from one and the same product instead of just once. Um, another example is to have a pre and post events. Um, event in this case is uh, something uh, uh, that is happening. Could be like a concert. Uh, where you inform people beforehand and, and ask for their opinion afterwards. In this case, it's a visit to a wellness spa. Um, and the mail on the left is the one that is sent out before people are actually going to the spa. They've made an appointment and they are reminded about that appointment and they, for instance, are asked, uh, do you, on top of your, your, uh, your booking, do you also want to book additional services like, uh, do you want to have a beauty treatment or do you um, want to have a massage and you can even stay in the hotel uh, just across the street and chill out for the whole afternoon you don't even have to go home once people have been to that spa they will get the mail on the on the right and in this mail they are asked about their opinion they if they have complaints they are stimulated to complain with the company if they are very satisfied they are stimulated to leave a positive review on some review websites so post and uh, pre-event mailings the final category is rela relationship phase triggers and these are not specifically related to products or events in the uh, the life of the customer but they are normally related to the relationship between a supplier and a customer and quite often they have something to do with a change in the customer status where is this customer on the customer ladder from suspect prospect shopper all the way to uh, to advocate um, and whenever some one of these changes occurs that might be the trigger uh, the relationship phase trigger I'll give you a couple of examples um, personally I think that every good marketing plan should come with programs for acquisition development and retention of customers because only then can you maximize customer value and of course this process this life cycle has a lot to do with relationship phase events when somebody moves from A to B to C now w I, when I was working with the Lage Land is part of the Rabobank um, financial services uh, group in in Holland and we would uh, find potential customers for leasing within the Rabobank marketing database once we had selected these and and some of them would buy our leasing products we would send them a welcome mail and at the end of their product uh, of, or the end of their uh, their contract we would try to retain them by sending them a mailing and uh, telling them you've now got new financial space to reinvest in a new leasing contract because you don't have to uh, pay your installments on your previous contract anymore um, the welcome program basically consisted of a personalized letter, a brochure, a custom customized a custom leaflet, where we only included the products that were uh, related to your or relevant to your company. If you had a small company in sector A, there would be totally different products in this bro brochure than if you were a big company in sector B. So we actually looked at your profile and customized your leaflet for you so we wouldn't um, bother you with any irrelevant 
information. Now, to celebrate the fact that you became a new customer with, um, with the Lage Landen, and that's where this whole uh, cake idea comes from, you can log into a website and you can order your welcome cake. While you do that, there's also a small uh, satisfaction, customer satisfaction survey. How did you experience your, uh, the, the, the closure of your, uh, or con your contract? And we also ask you to um, enhance the already available data we have. So we in, uh, improve the data within our database. Once that contract comes to an end, um, we uh, have a look and we determine uh, your profitability and your um, uh, probability of, of churn and based on that you go into an, a prior, priority A, B or C group and the A group, a high priority group, um, they get the offer of a uh, expensive navigation system if they renew their contract. The B group gets a slightly less expensive navigation system and the C group, the low priority group, is only informed about their contract ending. And all of this has to do with uh, with customer value. Um, another very simple example, uh, which which is easy to implement, uh, has to do with the Xi'an International Business Forum. I, uh, I lived in China for two years, and I was helping uh, the business forum, which is basically sort of an expat networking club, to um, do their online marketing. We would hold a lot of uh, different events for uh, for for people in Xi'an where we would ask people for their email address and they would then go on our mailing list and if they were subscribed for three months but still not a paying member we would send them uh, send them an email in which we would explain all of the privileges that paying members in the business forum would get all kinds of discounts and free trainings etc etc so um, after uh, people became a paying member uh, and 11 months later, just before their membership, their uh, one-year membership ran out, we would send them a request for renewal. We would repeat all of the um, advantages and the privileges they have within the club and we would also include a personalized message with uh, a link to the online annual report as sort of, um, uh, on one hand, transparency about uh, all of the things that were done with the uh, membership fees but also as uh, proof of all of the things that we have done for all of the members and this is something that could be very easily set up with uh, very simple triggered email messages and works quite well um, another example of course is if somebody puts something in their shopping cart but they don't actually uh, pay for this so it, it remains in the shopping cart without being actually purchased then you could send them uh, an abandoned shopping cart email uh, as the two examples you see here. And what seemingly works best is if you also include pictures of the products that's, that's got a higher um, conversion rate. Um, different companies, if you take all of these different events that I've just shown you, uh, different companies will use different types of events but the most common used are the, the welcome message the thank you message and the transaction data like all of the uh, examples of an order confirmation of a receipt etc etc um, some companies are uh, are using more uh, elaborate more um, evolved forms of, of trigger based marketing like you see here in the button uh, the win back campaign or the shopping cart abandonment not not used that often because uh, it's also a bit more complicated you need to be a, uh, do a bit more data mining but as you can see uh, marketing sherpa found that a lot of companies are already uh, using different forms of trigger based marketing of course what is crucial what's essential to trigger based marketing is that you have data to actually do this and there's different sources that you can use first of all there's a lot that you can ask customers on your web forms. Of course, you should try to avoid asking too much so that people don't want to register anymore. But in some cases, like for instance in the pet food market, I found that people are actually willing to share a lot of information um, about, in this case, their pet, uh, the birthday of their pet, the, the food they are using, if they have the feeling that they get something, something in return for sharing that information. You can use lead getting programs and I've spoken about the sample boxes for the baby care programs. You can also look at implicit data 
So like the searches that people do on your website or the page views, the, the parts of the website categories that they are looking at. You can look into your database to see if there's data that can identify or predict uh, events that are taking place. And you can go even one step further by using data mining and predictive modeling. But be careful, you might have heard about the case of, of Target, where Target was sending out uh, coupons for baby care products and one man was uh, got uh, one one father got very upset that they were sending this to his uh, teenage daughter um, he complained about that but later on he had to uh, apologize because it turned out that his daughter was really pregnant um, target had determined this uh, by looking uh, at the products that she was buying and, and based on her product uh, purchases they could determine that there was a high probability that she was pregnant now this is sort of getting too creepy um, so what they've done since is they are including the coupons uh, within other promotions and not send sending them isolated uh, now on Facebook Nowadays, it's also possible to look for events. You can um, uh, use advertising to people that have their birthday within a week, uh, are changing jobs, uh, are recently have moved. This is all, of course, data that uh, that that uh, Facebook can track, and even the uh, the cryptical new serious relationship, um, which probably has to do with the fact that you changed your uh, relationship status and thereby it's considered to be serious other social media you can use is you can scan for instance in twitter where people are um, discussing certain products and are thereby uh, telling you that they have a need for something or they are, are are not satisfied with something in this case i complained about TweetDeck. it's a um, microblogging tool and uh, a competitor um, hootsuite contacted me and say well if you don't like that product anymore why not try ours and I did and and I'm very satisfied with that new product so if you're careful with uh, with using this kind of data it can can work out for you qu quite well of course uh, still one of the most important sources of data is Google now uh, uh, Google keywords AdWords if people search for a specific word that is probably one of the best indicators that they have a need for a new product. And one of the things that um, Organon did um, when I was working there is they had fertility, um, fertility medicines, but of course they are not allowed to actually promote that to consumers. So what they did is they built um, this service tool called Fertility Journey and Fertility Coach, and they got people on that website by using uh, AdWords in Google and once people got on the website they were stimulated to sign up for the coach program where uh, they would flow into the uh, what you see here in the bottom um, a communication program with 20 different communications by email and based on the face that these uh, people were in were they still looking for information and thereby in the educational phase were they already seeing a gynecologist or were they already being treated or visiting an infertility clinic they would flow into the the, the correct step of this program um, so this is all but it all started with with AdWords what does the future look like of trigger-based marketing well things can get very um, uh, very complex but but also very elaborate and I'll give you one example that was recently shown by uh, Tipco Loyalty Lab is a uh, supplier of uh, software for trigger based and event driven marketing and they use this example which can be done in real life already so just imagine that a high volume a high value customer which a high value you can determine from the transactional data of his previous purchases which you have in your database and he walks very close or past one of your stores which you can do based on the geo location data of his uh, his mobile phone then during opening hours which you can see the operational data in your database when your shops are open and the current time of day um, you can also see that this specific customer has not been online or in your store purchasing in the in the previous month 
uh, again, uh, it's, it's available in your transaction data. You know from external data, in this case the weather report, that it's only 4 degrees outside. You know from transactional data that he's never bought any gloves with your company in your store. And you also uh, know that the gloves currently are overstocked. So you're trying to get away, uh, you're trying to reduce that stock. Um, the data comes from your, for instance, from your ERP systems. Then you also see that in your marketing system that the scarves are currently in a promotion. So you could now offer this specific consumer scarves and gloves in a, in a nice uh, promotion package. But of course only if he has opted in for mobile notifications on, on your clothing. And that's in the preference data in his profile. So And then you can send the right offer to the right person at the right time in the right place and it's all within the right context which makes this uh, trigger based marketing uh, method extremely um, relevant and and in most times also extremely profitable thereby um, well thank you for your uh, your attention uh, this is like I said this is a short introduction and it's a short summary of the possibilities you can contact me through these um, contact data uh, at Persuade um, in the Netherlands. You can also uh, follow me on, uh, on Twitter. Um, and of course, uh, if you want to read more about uh, this marketing technique, uh, you can, um, I can refer you to uh, Follow That Customer, uh, the book we wrote about it. Thank you.